Now that we've finished learning about how nonmetals form ions by gaining electrons in order to complete their valence shell and have a full set of eight valence electrons, it's time to look at how metals form ions in which they do so by doing exactly the opposite as nonmetals. So we're going to use lithium because it is the simplest and most straightforward metal and therefore the most obvious to explain how an ion forms. So as we can see from lithium Bohr-Rutherford diagram, we can see that lithium's valence shell only has a single electron in its valence shell like this. Now, if we look at how nonmetals form ions by adding electrons, and then if we apply this to lithium, we're going to see that we have a pretty big problem, that being that lithium would need to add seven electrons in order to get a full valence shell of eight. Now this doesn't really make a lot of sense because that's a lot of electrons that lithium would need to gain from other elements in order to have a full valence shell. So instead, what if we pose the question, what if lithium were to give away this electron instead? So what if it were to lose its one valence electron in its outer shell instead? Well, if we do that, we can see that lithium's previous valence shell, the second shell, is now empty because it gave away this valence electron to another element, and therefore there is nothing actually occupying the second shell anymore, and therefore the first shell is the only electron shell that is left, and therefore, because it is the only electron shell, it by default is the one that is farthest away from the nucleus, and the first shell is now the new valence shell, and we know that the first shell can hold a maximum of two valence electrons, in which lithium already has two, we can see that lithium has achieved a full valence shell by losing electrons rather than gaining electrons. So in order to show how metals form ions, we can simply look at the number of valence electrons that a metal has, and because transferring the fewest number of electrons is easier to do, losing one electron is obviously easier to do than gaining seven electrons, and that's exactly what lithium does. So this extends to basically all metals that preferentially lose valence electrons in order to form an ion, because rather than nonmetals that have more than four valence electrons, uh, in which case it's easier for nonmetal to add electrons than to lose, nonmetals actually have less than four valence electrons, and therefore it is easier to lose their valence electrons than it is to gain. And when this happens, uh, we can actually draw the proper structure of lithium as an ion. Remember that we need to add square brackets in order to represent that this is an ion, but we also need to calculate the charge. And we can do that in one of two ways, as with nonmetals. We can count the number of protons, in which lithium's case is three, in order to figure out how much positive charge the atom has, and then count electrons, that being only two in lithium's valence shell here for a total of negative two charge. We can see that lithium's ion has more positive charge than negative charge, uh, and therefore we can conclude from some simple addition that lithium has a positive one charge, which we represent as one plus here. Now, if we want to do this by looking at the change in the number of electrons instead, we can do that just as well. So lithium has lost one electron, meaning that it is going to be less negative than the atom was because you're taking negative charge away. Now, a different way of saying this, when we become less negative, we actually become more positive, and we can see this by losing an electron. Lithium now has more protons than it does electrons. And if we want to do this just by addition and subtraction, when we subtract a charge of negative one, which is how much one electron has, that is the equivalent of adding one, 
And because subtracting negative 1 is equal to positive 1, that's another way that we can show that lithium is going to end up with a positive 1 charge. Now, the technical term, rather than anions, which are the word that describes non-metal ions by adding electrons and becoming negatively charged, metal ions that lose electrons and become positively charged are what we call cations. So again, this English word looks like it's pronounced cation, uh, but it actually would be pronounced cations as uh, two distinct syllables like this. Now, finally, just like with non-metal ions, oftentimes it is easier to represent the changes in the valence shell using Lewis structures instead. And with non-metals, this is even easier to do because, sorry, with metals, this is even easier to do than non-metals because the number of valence electrons is usually quite small. So lithium only starts with one, and we know that lithium is going to lose this electron, giving it away to another element. So we represent the ion like this. You will notice that we've represented the ion with the brackets to show that it's an ion and the charge in the top right corner, but you will notice that all of lithium's valence electrons are not shown here, and this is to indicate that lithium as a metal lost its valence electrons rather than gained, and therefore we don't bother showing any valence electrons at all in the valence structure of the metal ion, again, indicating that the metal lost electrons in order to form this structure here. Now, before you move on to the final video in this series on ions, in which we will talk about elements that don't form ions at all, take a look at the practice problems below. See if you can draw both the Bohr-Rutherford diagram of the atom form of each element, and then based on looking at the valence shell, figure out how many electrons that element is going to gain or lose, and then draw what the Bohr-Rutherford diagram will look like for the ion, and then do the same in terms of the Lewis structure. And when you are complete with all of these practice problems here, you can take a look at the final video in this series in which we are going to look at special cases of elements that don't form ions at all.